Hello, this talk is how not to restore a Volkswagen bus. My name is Matt Rabel and of all I grew up in the backwoods of Montana with no electricity and no running water for 16 years. I had to walk a mile and a half to the bus stop every day. And sometimes it felt like it was uphill both ways. But this is the cabin I grew up in, in Montana. And uh, boy, does that have a lot of good memories. I live in Denver, Colorado now with my beautiful wife, Trish, my two awesome kids, Abby and Jack. I also have a middle child. His name is Hefe. His name is Hefe. And this is the story of Hefe. I also have a Synchro Westie named Stout. I like beer. So my first Volkswagen was a 1969 Bug, and I bought it, I think it was my junior year in high school, and I restored it myself, everything but the paint job. So here you can see a picture of it in my senior photo, and uh, with my Michael Jordans on, if any of you are watching The Last Dance, boy, what a great show. So I was living that time, right? This is from 1992, but I'd always longed for a bus. That was the real dream. And so on April 10th, 2004, I was kind of looking at buses for about six months beforehand, and this one came up on eBay. And I could buy it now for 9,000. <laughs> Sorry, it's a, uh, it's a fun memory. I could buy it now for almost 10 grand. And so it was crazy at the time that someone had spent nine grand for an old beater of a bus, let alone a VW. And uh, and so I was like, wow, what if DU is the local school that I went to, uh, University of Denver. I was like, what if Denver won the National Hockey Championship tonight, which they had never won. I went to school, you know, 92 to 97, and they had never won. They had never even did that well, and uh, they were about to win the National Hockey Championship. So when they did it, I bought the bus. So... We had a road trip, my dad and I, on June 3rd, 2004. I wrote this blog post. So a lot of what I'm going to, when I'm looking down, I'm reading like notes from my blog posts that I wrote all along the time. So June 3rd, 2004, I'm headed to the airport within the next hour to embark upon Rabel Road Trip number eight. My dad is meeting me in San Diego tonight. We're picking up the new bus tomorrow morning. There it is. Doesn't look so great, but it sure looked good at the time. And all I was really concerned about was 21 windows because that's what I wanted. And I just wanted to restore it, give it a nice paint job and drive it around. All right. And so this was at one point, my dad and I driving through Utah and the national parks. And what had happened is the first day we drove it from San Diego to Las Vegas and uh, we were on the freeway and anything over like 60 miles an hour, it would just get really, really loud. And so we realized later it's like gearboxes that they put in the old buses that like prevented them or scared people from going fast or whatever. So every time we would go fast, we were like, Jesus, this thing, you know, seems like it's going to fall apart. So anyway, we stay in Vegas that night and we get up at like five in the morning because it's air cooled. So you got to drive when it's cool out. And, uh, and we're driving out of Vegas and this truck drives up behind us and almost hits us. Like my dad's driving and almost slams into the back of us, goes around us. And then a mile or two later, we see the car flipped over. We don't know if it was that truck or it influenced another driver or whatever, but we were like done with freeways. So we got off the freeway. We drove through all these national parks in Utah and uh, it was just awesome. It was great to be on the back roads. So Saturday, October 15th, 2005, I finally went to work. So this is, you know, a year and a half later or so. And uh, I went around and called a bunch of shops and was like, you know, do you want to work on it? Do you want to work on it? And I found this Mike Lopez of Twins Auto Body and Paint. He told me to bring my bus in and take a look at it. And I remember being mesmerized as he like, you know, felt around the bus and, you know, we can fix this and we can fix this. And he said it'd be like five grand. Right. And then I asked him how much for for, for show quality. And he was like, mm, maybe 10 grand. So I was like, this is going to be awesome. And do you think you can have it done by next summer? He was like, yeah. And so that Christmas, my dad and I uh, pulled the engine and uh, it was a lot more difficult than the bug, but we consulted the how to keep your Volkswagen alive book and five minutes later, we were done. So I figured it'd be ready for the shop sometime in January. And it took till April, right? To strip it out and get it ready for the shop. And so April, 2006, 
it's ready to go to Mike's Twins Auto Body, right? Seven months later, this is what it looks like. I was hoping to drive it around that summer, but not quite ready. So November 2006, June 2007, not much has changed. This is eight months later, right? So this time it was out of the corner and Mike was actively working on it. He says he was in the midst of replacing the floor pan and doing all the welding it needs before prepping for paint. I doubt it'll be done this summer, but I'm still hopeful, right? These are my words from my blog. And you can see the floor definitely needs replacing. And there's obviously some denting and things to do on the door panel there. So the shop where it was at was too slow, obviously, but also they went out of business. So total cost was five grand to get it looking like this. This is basically almost the paint stripped, right? So I've been talking to MotorWorks Restorations in Colorado Springs, and I hope to get it into their shop within the next couple of months. And they, after they've completed the body and paint and possibly electrical, I hope to rebuild the engine, finish the interior, and have it on the road by next summer. So that's me, right? I'm just going to do most of the work myself. I'm going to have them paint it, and then rebuild the engine, finish the interior, have it on the road. So this is 2007. 2008, that summer, it heads to uh, MotorWorks Restorations. And uh, what I said in January 19 of 2008 was, I'm going to have MotorWorks do the paint and body and possibly suspension. Jeremy, the owner, said they could probably take it out of my hands in March and have it back to me two to three months later. Right? Like, wow, that would be awesome. I'm going to drive it this summer. MotorWorks seems to be or seem to be the best car company on the front range to help me make my Volkswagen into my dream car. So these are my words from my blog post. I realize it's going to cost quite a bit of cash. A full restoration to pristine condition is $50,000, but it's something I've always wanted to do. Furthermore, it's not a bad investment. Most car restorations are. And Jeremy told me about a deal where he saw where a guy sold his restored 59 for 70 grand. I'm certainly not spending, planning on spending that kind of money this year, but with 15,000 already into the project, it's likely I'll spend another 30K over the next five to 10 years. So Jeremy picks it up on July 7th. It's scheduled to be returned in January of next year with a straight body and a slick yellow and white paint job. The engine interior and suspension will be up to me at that point. So two months later, September, 2008, I went down and visited. This is what it looks like. I said, the bus looks great. MotorWorks Restorations has really done a lot of very detailed work in the last couple of months. We talked a good hour about the possibilities in wheels, transmission, engine suspension, gauges, and interior. My favorite topics were the airbags, six cylinder 911 engine, and safari windows. Quote of the night was, it's going to be better than it was when it was brand new. So obviously things got a little out of whack here between me being like, paint it, I'll do the engine and everything versus, hey, you guys could do or them basically selling me on, hey, we could do all this crazy stuff. So 2008, what happens in 2008? Well, I worked for LinkedIn at the time. And in November 2008, I was an employee at LinkedIn and I got laid off as part of the 10% cut. So I had an office in Denver that I helped run. And for the last several months, I had been using my credit card to pay for the bus. And I had to put the project on hold because I could no longer afford it. So this is November 2008. It was a great day when I got laid off. We kind of knew it was going to happen beforehand. So uh, me and my buddies kind of, you know, maybe had a drink before they gave us the phone call and we all got laid off. But uh, the lesson learned there, for me at least, was don't quit your high paying independent gig for a full time gig when you're restoring a bus. So fast forward, you know, 2010. Last time we were in November 2008, and we're at Volkswagen's on the Green, which is a Volkswagen show in Colorado that's very popular. A lot of people go to. I had a conversation with Jeremy about adding a Porsche suspensions and brakes to the mix. So again, scope creep, my fault. But my bus restoration project has been on hold for a couple of years, and I'm happy to report I'll be starting again the next few months. I don't know if we'll finish it this year, but there's a really good chance we'll be driving it to a lot of Colorado VW shows next year. Lesson learned: Don't allow scope creep scope creep unless you're willing to 10x the time and cost of your project. So April 20th, 2012, the end is in sight, right? 
things are starting to get, you know, uh, sanded and there's a lot of primer. It looks good. And the uh, unfortunate thing was October 26, 2012. I wrote a blog post called, When is the bus going to be done? Because people would always ask me, right? They've I've been working on this thing for, you know, since 2006 and, you know, it's 2012. What's going on? And so at the end of that blog post, I said, I finally admit it. I have no idea when it's going to be done. I'm hopeful it'll be in a few months, which is what I always said. So the next year, 2013, Abby, Jack, and I all married Trish McGinnity, um, love of my life. And, uh, and we spent that summer in Montana. And right before that, I actually went into MotorWorks and I was like, this is taking too long. I want it back. And so most of my frustration with them was I would send them emails and they wouldn't respond. And I'd finally call and then they'd respond to the email. So it was like two to three weeks, right? Between me initiating a conversation and them getting back. So on software projects, right? If you have contractors or software development teams you're working with and uh, they take long enough to get back, like, you know, it's time to move on. So in October of 2013, we bought a ski bus and uh, it was another terrible investment. Um, really expensive, $45,000, um, had a Subaru engine, looked like it was like a brand new Subaru. We were ready to go and have a great time in it. And, uh, but it's created wonderful and lasting memories. So my lesson learned here was don't buy a fixed up synchro. That's what it is. It's four wheel drive, unless you don't mind spending twice as much on it. Um, however, like I said, the adventures are priceless. So now we get to April 10th, 2014. It's been 10 years since I bought the bus. June 2013, I mentioned I removed it from MotorWorks. And for six months, I had it in a friend of a friend's garage and he was working on it. He was doing a bunch of welding. He was trying to get the engine in. I had bought that Porsche engine. And we were putting that in. And uh, and then I was like, you know, this guy kind of knows what he's doing, but not really. Like he wants to paint it in his garage. And I'm like, I want the best bus that's ever been built. And so we found this company called Reincarnation Auto and the guy where it was at helped us. And uh, we took it to them and they were like, yeah, we can probably knock it out in about three months. Now, keep in mind, they had never restored a Volkswagen bus before. So January 2014, they come to me and they say, basically, I'm unaware of who did the work at this point, but they are an embarrassment to our industry. So they found so much Bondo from the previous shop that they had to redo everything. And just to let you know, the previous shop found that the guy that did the floor, they had to rip it out and redo that as well. So... Uh, it's very expensive to switch contractors or development teams in the middle of a project. So they said it's going to be 17 grand to fix a bondo and get it ready, bondo and get it ready for paint. So I was basically at this point, like, what? What? Like, I expected to spend 20 grand and be done with it, right? And uh, so that took me a while to cope with it. And so April 23rd, 2014, I said, if I agree to redo all the bodywork and get rid of the bondo you think you can have a schedule like the following. And my schedule was done by July, right? And they said, yep, and it'll be in color. It'll be painted by the second week of June and it'll cost $4,500 per week. And I was like, hey, you know, I'm making good money. I have a contract with Oracle. Life is good. Let's do this. And uh, and so we started it and it... uh. It went to October and you can imagine $4,500 a week uh, adds up pretty quickly when you start in April and go to October. And so I sent him an email on October 12, 2014 and said, I can no afford for you guys to work on my bus. When I originally brought it to your shop last year, I had no idea what it would cost me. And $90,000 is a bit steep for getting the engine running and the body work done. So Jim, called me down, right? He never even replied to that message. He just said, okay. And, uh, and he called me down December and said, come on in and uh, let's talk about getting this project done. And I was basically going to tell him, if you give me a fixed bid, like, yes, I will, you know, sign off and we can finish it. But um, if you don't, then I don't know. And so when I got there, he surprised me with a finished paint job. And so I walked in and Right. You can imagine it was awesome. And I loved it so much. Like I had picked out the colors, but I never expected it to look so good. And so Jim, you know, he's like Santa. He made it all happen, even though he charged me so much. Right. But 
oh my God, the paint job is just excellent. And so that was my best Christmas present that I've ever gotten. And so then we moved to July, 2015. He said it'd be done in three months, right? So a year later, and then all the way to the next summer, it's finally ready for interior work. And so, so fine is an interior shop in Denver. This is Mike on the right there and Carol in the middle. They're the owners and proprietors and they're quite possibly the coolest people I met through the whole experience. Um, this was the first time I felt like I was working with VW experts. They were like, you got to take this out. You can't do this. You need to do this. And they really, you know, buttoned it up and made it look awesome. So my lesson learned there was practitioners have vast amounts of wisdom, right? These guys have worked on Volkswagens for 20 years. And even though Jeremy and Motorworks Restorations down in the Springs had, I just didn't have a good communication experience with them. They've had several Volkswagens that are in, you know, magazines and they've done great work, but we didn't gel very well. So Hefe 1.0 was finally released in April 13th, 2016. These are some professional photos that uh, down in Reincarnation Auto had done. Jim had them done for me. Um, the bus is home 12 years and three days after I bought it. So that was in my blog post. And you can see it looks pretty awesome. And uh, the interior by So Fine was just magnificent. They were... This was all their idea. They were like, go white and do the uh, the beating of the yellow and, uh, and you know, make sure the windows are clear, like no tint, just make it like pow, pop. And uh, they certainly did that. So you can see I had airbags there, right? There's a little thing on the thing. And, uh, and that actually turned out to be a wild mistake, but I'll get that to that in a minute. Um, this is a Porsche engine in the back, six cylinders, 250 horsepower. This is the stat sheet I got when I bought it off eBay. So I bought two major items off eBay, the bus itself for $96.50 originally, and the engine was $18,500. So um, 3.2 liter carbureted 911 engine from an 83 SC and uh, you know 240 horsepower and just awesome engine. Like I expected it to be like a Corvette, but you know, it's not. But it gets up and goes way better than any Volkswagen bus. But you can see I got that big uh, air tank in the back. So that kind of became a problem later as well. So that summer, we towed it to Montana on a trailer. And I drove in the 4th of July parade in the town I grew up in. This is on the front road to the cabin where I grew up. And we just had a ball. We had so much fun with him. We drove in a couple different parades. And then we hauled him back to Denver. And I took him to a show at the Bandemir Speedway, the Colorado Bug Inn. And on the way home, the rear shock exploded. And so what was happening with the airbags and the suspension and everything was the shock, um, when I would lower it in the back, it would rub against the shock. So things weren't quite fitting back there. And it finally just exploded the shock. So I took it down to MotorWorks Restorations and they fixed the shock, but I knew there was something more wrong. And so the front suspension was just like super stiff, whether you were up on the air suspension or down, and uh, even more so, I took it to another show called Buses at the Brewery in Colorado Springs. And uh, on my way, like one of the rear suspension mounts came off. And then a month later, when we're driving to our new house where we live now, um, the rear wheel was doing like this kind of thing. And so I knew like this car is dangerous to drive. I need to get it fixed. So I found this company called Custom Coachworks. And Custom Coachworks was like the real polisher that made everything just work. And so... The problems that I had at the time was there was really big door gaps, like inch door gaps in the front doors. Obviously, the suspension and uh, KCW, Custom Coachworks, fixed it in a couple of weeks. They posted status on their website the whole time, like daily pictures. And MotorWorks Restorations did that too, but I was paying them like five grand you know, a week. And uh, when, when I left Custom Coachworks, they told me, they said, you know, we could have finished this in a couple of years for a third of the cost. And I had sent them an email. I found that email that I'd sent January 24th, 2013, before I ever sent it to reincarnation or anyone. And they never responded. I was like, I have this bus project. I want you to finish and everything. So, you know, even though they could have, they didn't. So that was Hefe 2.0. Hefe 3.0 was a stereo that I added to JL Audios in the back. And uh, in this bit play um, radio that made it so my phone controlled everything and the mobile app was terrible. Like it wasn't even usable. And the car was so bumpy, even though we'd fixed the suspension, it's lowered, 
um, I could never do anything, you know, on the screen while I was driving. So I went back to him and I was like, you got to fix this. Let's make it even better. So this is May, 2017, 2018. I invest, you know, another five grand in the stereo or whatnot. And now it's up to like 2000 Watts, Audison amps everywhere, JL audio speakers and so loud that it can actually make your ears hurt. So that's kind of what I wanted, right? I mean, volume wise and the bass is like, it makes me cry when I listen to it. So it sounds fucking incredible. So we took him in the St. Patty's Day Parade. And he's just the best. He inspires smiles every time I drive him. It provides joy to people every time I see him, like everyone smiles. So, sorry. Kudos to all seven Colorado shops that made Hefe possible. I won't say he's worth every penny, but he's pretty darn close. So my daughter, Abby, observed the other day, this is from March 14th, 2018. Most people are frowning when they're driving, but I'm not one of those people. And uh, you'll notice it has 21 likes. So if you go to the bus category on my website, you can read all of it. It's all there. So the proper way to restore a Volkswagen bus is plan for it to take a really long time. Get involved with the community to learn more. If I had talked to bus people earlier and it shows and everything, I would have known who to talk to. That's how I got hooked up with Custom Coachworks. There was a guy who had a similar bus to mine, told me how to go and you know get it fixed and who to talk to. Never give up hope. Keep trying. I felt like uh, like I always knew it was going to be done. And so it was never a question of if, it was always when. So if you have a dream that you really believe in, it will come true. Do the work yourself. I didn't want to do it originally because I thought it'd be more expensive to buy the tools and do it myself. But at the same time, all my estimates were 20 grand at the time. and uh, Or hire people who drive a VW bus. And don't be afraid to be different. Let your personality shine through, right? I wanted that Porsche engine. I wanted the mega stereo. And I got those. And there's people that look at it and they're like, eh, when they've done that. And I'm like, yeah. But that's my personality. That's me all over it. So I love it. And people will ask the price. So yeah, it was 300 grand, but there was one that sold for 310 and it wasn't even a 21 window. It was a fake 21 window with stamps on the top. And so find it their interior too. So if I ever wanted to sell it, which I never would, I know I could get my money back. So thanks for coming today. If you want to keep in touch, rabeldesigns.com. I'm on Twitter. You can find the bus and myself, BWs for Life on Instagram. I'll upload this to Speaker Deck, and a lot of the code I do is on Octa, Octa Developer. And uh, may the auth be with you.